Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another edition of the show. So we're about to start getting into some sample wines that were sent to me for review and I've been a total slacker and I haven't uh, done them yet. I mean, life got in the way, then Burgundy got in the way and then I kind of was lazy for a little bit and then, anyway. <clears throat> so let's get right into it. Well, let's, let's, let's put it this way. March and April at work was insane. So I just, yeah, on my days off, I relaxed. All right, so um, let's get into this because, well, I got a lot of wine to review. All right, so this one was sent to me. Um, uh, so I was contacted by um, Terry Davis. Um, and Terry is a Texas native who now makes wine in Napa. And he contacted me um, several months ago. And I had... I hadn't like reply back to him and I finally reply back to him. He sent me the wine and I wasn't here to receive it. So I'm usually never at home to receive the wine. So I always say, Hey, you know, UPS, I'll come pick it up. And then I was then made it to UPS. So the wine got sent back. So I had him like, Oh, I'm really sorry, blah, blah, blah. So he ended up sending me the wine, obviously, cause it's right there. And I made sure I picked it up this time because I didn't want to do that to the guy. Um, Anyway, so he's been out there for a little while. Um, let me get to their story thing real quick to find. I can't remember exactly when they got out there. It was in the 90s, I believe. Um, but anyway, uh, their son was uh, diagnosed with uh, cystic fibrosis like 30 years ago. So they got involved in like fundraising and all that. And from all that, they had a love of food and wine, and they just kind of one thing led to the, to another. They met the right people, and you know this guy was like, "Hey, you know, if you want to, if you get some grapes, let me know. I'll help you make the wine." Um, and uh, so that guy was uh, Wayne Donaldson, and um, they ended up partnering up. And he uh, Terry got some other partners, and they're kind of like, "Are you you don't know how to make wine, but you want me to invest? Okay, sure." Um, so anyway, so they did that, and they also have another uh, winemaker named Paul Colantu Colantuoni. Oh, dude, I'm sorry. From one Italian to the other, I'm really sorry. I messed up your last name. Colantuoni. Tuoni. Colantuoni. Colantuoni. Colant I don't know. You may have Americanized your name like, like, like our family did. Um, anyway, so they've been making the wine for a little bit, and uh, he's was very kind enough because I just now found out how much this bottle of wine is uh, to send me this. This is basically uh, his top bottling. So <clears throat> no pressure to give it a good review, right? Anyway, uh, so this is the 2013 Frisson, uh, not Frisson, uh, Cabernet Sauvignon from Napa Valley. It's actually from Rutherford. Um, and it is, I'm, I'm it doesn't say if it's a hundred percent cab, but we're going to we're going to assume it is. I don't know why I was looking for a wine key. Maybe because I really haven't used my Corvin in a while. I mean, just like I open a bottle of wine and I either drink it all that that sitting or I um, vacuum in it and drink it like a couple days later. Yes, I still use the vacuum in because it's it still does this job. Corvin's awesome if you're going to, like this, in this case, I probably won't be drinking this wine for several months. Um, you know, it's, it's really good for that type of stuff. All right. So let's get into the wine. And all these wines that I've been I'm going to be reviewing tonight, like this one had been in the cellar for, well, for weeks. Um, it's still a little cold. Um, it's been sitting around 56 to 50, you know, the white's around 50, the red's around 55, 56. Um, they've been sitting out for 
half an hour, maybe a little longer. So um, they should be warm enough to where it's probably pretty close to serving temperature. So they shouldn't be too dull is what I'm trying to say. All right, so on the nose, as I said, all that, you know, it should be a good uh, serving temperature. Just making sure, okay, I was not hitting that. Um, there isn't a whole lot on the nose, and that could be the temperature, you know. Um, <clears throat> I get red fruit. I get a little smoke. Um, this is definitely well, you know, this has nothing to do with the, the smoke, you know, the fires from last year. Cause I've had the wine since then, since, since the fires, um, get a touch of cedar box. It's weird. I, I got like this bubblegum aroma, but I don't know. It's just something a little bit different from it, but. There's like a meatiness to it. Yeah, a little bit, um, maybe more of a candied uh, raspberry, candy cherry. Yeah, something like that. Touch of spice, you know, you can definitely tell there's oak on it. He does say there's a restrained use of French oak. So, um, that should mean that it's not 100% new French oak, but we definitely got some oak on here. Maybe it, you know, some of it's new. Smells good. So let's, let's, uh, see how it tastes. Yeah, tastes good. Um, so the red fruit still comes through. Um, definitely pretty tannic, you know, definitely dry, um, but the fruit is, is, is ripe. Um, Acidity is pretty good. Um, there is, and, and I always tell people, I'm going to give you 100% honesty on my reviews. Um, there is a fleeting moment of this, um, and, and this is typical, this is, um, happens in California wines for me a lot. Um, but in this case, it's, it's fleeting, so it's not like an overbearing presence, but there's a chemical type of flavor, aroma, that I call a bunch of different things. Sometimes I call it coffee and bitter. Sometimes I'll cut chemical. Um, it's, I think it's just a matter of what else is there. I would say it's probably closer to coffee than anything else. But it's not, it's not there on every single sip. It's like, it comes and it goes. Um, and it's only because I, 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 I'm, I'm sensitive to it. There's a little bit of stemminess to it. Um, not saying that he has stem inclusion on this or, or using whole cluster. Um, but there's a, there's a bit of uh, bitterness. So that's also probably where I'm getting that from. Um, not in a bad way, bitter, cause bitter can be good. Um, but you know, darker fruits are coming now, coming, you know, on, on the palate more like more of the blackberry rather than just raspberry. Um, it's not as candied on the nose as it is. I mean, the, the nose is more candy than the, uh, than the palate. It's definitely drier, but, but, um, ripe. A little meaty. A little piney, a little woodsy. Let this sit out for a little bit. It's going to be pretty spectacular. Okay. Um, did I mention it was $95? I think I did. Anyway, um, from the winery. I don't know if he has this out in, in retail or you can find it in restaurants. But um, it, it's good. Like, you can tell this is a well-made wine. Um, decanted a little bit. 
I mean, you're you're talking something something that's pretty spectacular. Warm it up just a, just a hair a little, just a hair more. You know, get a little more warmer, but not by much. It's going to be good. Um, let's see, <clears throat> and maybe that bitterness is the Rutherford dust. You know, I'll, I'll be honest. They call this thing you know they have this Rutherford dust thing. I've had a lot of Rutherford wine, um, and I don't know if it's like dust is like this euphemism for something else, but I never taste anything that's dusty. Because I think dusty, I think Italian wine or, or Tempranillo, Rioja, that's dusty. I don't ever get that from Napa wines, not, not that type of thing. So I'm going to have to like really sit down with people and like, what do you mean by Rutherford dust? Because that's one of those terms that everyone just kind of assumes everybody means, everybody knows. Kind of like knowing something is reductive. Well, if you've never been taught with what reductive means, then you don't know what they mean. And it took me a long time to figure out what that meant. It means, um, well, it means lack of oxygen, but you tend to get either something that's closed or you can have uh, some sulfurous or match stick, that type of stuff, aromas, uh, you know, when you first open the wine and it t- tends to blow off. Um, not necessarily rotten egg, but you could get that too. Um, so reductive winemaking, not reductive oxidative winemaking. So, so people seem to think, that you, oh, you should know what that means. Well, I didn't because no one told me what it meant. I've had to like search, seek it out. Uh, anyway, uh, let's see. They talk about Rutherford dust, opulent flavors, nice palate, mouthfeel, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, the acid and tannins, I, I agree with that. Um, nothing nothing really specific on here. Whiff, whiff of coffee. Well, there you go. There's the coffee, the bitterness. Um, blackberry and currant and cassis. I uh, was more blackberry and raspberry, but yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, this is definitely, um, it's not over the top. Uh, you know, it's not some over the top fruit bomb. Uh, it's the alcohol's integrated well, it's 14 and a half percent alcohol. Um, so it's not, and it's not terribly hot, like it's all well, it's well balanced. So yeah, I mean, you're paying a lot of money for a bottle of wine, but you know, it should be made well. This is not, this is not, you're not gonna have a $20 bottle of wine and be like, oh, I'm just like Frazon. No, you're not, okay? I mean, it might taste similar, but the quality level is not gonna be the same. There's a reason why this is, this is more expensive than a $20 or a $15, you know, California cab or a Napa cab. I like it, I like it a lot, especially because it's not over the top, um, oak and all that kind of stuff like i said let it sit out put in the canter it'll be great all right so uh, that's going to do it uh for this episode um as always thank you all for stopping by uh you can click the links above to from me up though remember i'm really not on social media much right now um but at least follow me or whatever click the link over there to donate if you want to know about the whole donate thing besides you know help me pay for wine which all these wines were free um you can look at episode 402 uh, I can tell you all about that. Um, and um, click the links below. I'll have a link for the winery. And uh, we will see everyone again next time.